What's up, friends? Welcome to The Beautiful Mess, where we talk about tools and tactics to improve your life. I'm your host, Paul Dittus, a content creator, YouTuber, and podcaster, and super excited to have you on this journey. Uh, we started this podcast messy, and we aim to keep it messy as we journey through life, where we navigate the, uh, you know, between order and chaos and everywhere in between. Uh, obviously, life can be messy and uh we're we're trying to figure out ways to uh you know make those one percent changes we're not about necessarily a quick fix mentality where you can all of a sudden uh you know drink this juice and then all of a sudden you're working five times faster if you find that out i mean coffee is probably the closest thing to that so i would highly recommend drinking coffee if you don't already uh, <laughs> that said uh, th there's a really fascinating book called why we sleep um, I'll probably talk about it sometime maybe I'll have to have an episode just on sleeping and the importance of it and what it does to you um, your health and development and success honestly it's it's that important uh, but the the crazy thing is this doctor um, it talks about how they basically drugged up spiders and they had the, you know, I, I don't think they told them to do this, but spiders naturally make webs. And it was whole, I mean, just kind of actually crazy to see what happened. Basically, they found that the spiders that were under certain drugs, like obviously there were problems with the web, like it was nowhere near what a regular web was. However, the one where they drugged up the spiders with just coffee. I mean, coffee is a drug, but this, the web like didn't even look representative of a like spider web. So maybe that's a sign. Maybe, you know, it's, it's not so great. I mean, so you do your research. Uh, I I've feel like there's many different opinions on coffee, but I love it. What can I say? So. I, I enjoy my cup of coffee in the morning. I, I love drinking a, we, we have a Breville machine, which makes espresso. And so I really enjoy an Americano. It's like a kind of just a fast way of making coffee in the morning. Um, just, yeah, double shot Americano. Sometimes I have that twice a day and it's, it's good stuff. And, and I would suggest having a cutoff time. Like that's what they recommend for sleep. It's like you want to cut off coffee around like, 2 p.m. and you can kind of experiment with it because the half-life of coffee I think is like 12 hours later so um, it takes a long time for the caffeine to leave your system or maybe you can have a combination of you know half calf like half part decaf beans and um, some full calf beans in there um, but yeah I love my coffee that was kind of like a side train but let's uh dive into the topic of today which is grit and uh so as you may or may not know this year my goal is to read 40 books we're in june today is june 15th well, i don't know when you're listening to it but in 2022 my goal is to read 40 books and so far i'm in the process of reading number 26 of 40 so still hoping to hit that goal uh if not surpass it uh, super excited. I've been enjoying just, I, I love books. I don't know about you. If you have any book recommendations, shoot me a message. I'm on social media at Paul Dittus. If there is a book that you've greatly enjoyed that's brought you um, deeper understanding or um, just you've enjoyed reading, send, send it my way. Love to hear about it. Anywho, so I'm about 76% of the way into the book. As you know, I love to listen to audiobooks, so I know the exact percentage. Uh, but the book is Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance by Angela Duckworth. Um, it's it's really uh, interesting read. Basically, it talks about how it's important to um, have like a passion but like not like a passion that like you burn out on and like it's like 
I'm passionate about this today. And then next week I'm going to be passionate about this. No, it's like, it's like more of a long term, And that's where probably where the perseverance, like you're going to be, uh, it's kind of like a North star in your life. Like where you kind of, it's, it's like a lens, um, through which you see life. Like that's how important, like this kind of idea of like passion and perseverance. It's like grit. It's, you know, you're, you're really like taking life by the reins and you're like determining what it is that you're here on earth to do. And to be honest, like, I don't know whether or not I know what it is that I want to be gritty about. And so, and they talk about in the book that like, you don't have to have it all figured out now. And what you can do to figure it out is to do some experimentation. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, So highly recommend just like try, like if you haven't quite figured out yet what you want to be gritty about, uh, first of all, I I recommend the book. It's it's been a good read so far. Um, But so, you know, they they have examples of people that might not have yet figured it out um, or like their process that they went through, like, and, and it was it was interesting um, to hear about it. But like the idea is that like talent alone can only get you so far. And, you know, talent with grit, you can go a lot further. And I think that's that's a big difference. It's like um, and especially as a musician, I thought it was really fascinating because like you get told all the time from people. It's like you're super talented at this. Like you're and like just people say it. They don't really you know, it's just because you play an instrument, even if you're terrible at it, maybe, uh, I mean, you have to have some proficiency, but uh, you know, people will say like, you're super talented. And the problem about that, and it goes back to, you know, the, one of the episodes that we had about growth mindset versus fixed mindset is that when you tell someone that they're talented, then they become, you know, they should uh, like achieve those results without working like that. That's like the, internalized uh, message that people get. And that's why instead of praising students for um, how talented they are, like say, you're super talented, you should praise them for the effort that they put in. Because that will encourage them that like, it's a good thing to put effort in. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't show that you're weak or you're less talented than anyone else. Uh, I could definitely say that from a musical perspective. Like I... Going into, like, I I wanted to be a music major. And I just realized, like, I didn't know really how to read music well. And so I set about, like, I, you know, did exercises online. Like, I I did whatever it took to figure out how to read music and how to do it well. And it took effort. It took a lot of effort. Uh, But it paid off in the end. Like, I, I managed to get really good at reading music. Was it easy? No. And it took a lot of time and practice and um, both in theory and in just, you know, putting in the hours with piano and voice and choir, like all of those things really paid off in the long run. However, uh, if I didn't put in the effort, I, I don't think I would be, you know, able to have gotten a music degree that I did because I, I really needed to push myself uh, to kind of get get prepared for um, being in, in music. And so, yeah, like if you don't know where you want to go, like to start, like pick a couple of things to try out and experiment and see what resonates with you. And then like once you figure out it and it kind of reminded me of this idea of core values um and so like this idea of having like businesses a lot of times have core values by which they operate and um the so i guess i should have done this in the beginning but the way angela duckworth defines grit is grit is passion and perseverance for long-term goals uh and it's kind of about like having an ultimate concern, kind of like a framework for life. Um, and so again, like core values, it's just basically like this way that you see yourself like living out life 
to the fullest. Like you're, you're realizing like that I'm most fully alive when I do these things. And like, I really want to put my energy and effort into these like passions that I have. Uh, and so like for her, I think it was like teaching, I I'd have to go back and listen, but like, it was, it was something about like teaching the, like the psychology of, um, maybe something related to grit and somehow I, I can't remember the exact terms, but like, um, it doesn't necessarily, then this was the interesting thing that she kind of defined was like, there's like almost a hierarchy of goals and there's like the goals that you shouldn't change. Those are like, again, it's like kind of like the grit. That's like the top level. Like you shouldn't be changing those like every week. However, as you get lower down and like the smaller the goals or maybe um, you've selected some goals and you're trying to live them out and you just realize like this one is not working out or two, it just doesn't like resonate with you. So you got like two options, either A, you realize like, I got to put in more effort. I got to like double down on this. Or you just say, hey, this is not the way I'm going to live out my like overarching grit principle, like that long term goal. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to die on this hill, so to speak. Like I'm going to adapt. I'm going to realize like, hey, uh, this particular area, like this focus that I had, on you know the, it's it's a lower down maybe like a, a mid grade or or lower uh goal and it just it's not working out i don't think it's one that i need to achieve to be successful in life and i i just don't want to continue and that you know that that's where it's probably better to make those like uh changes is, is like kind of in that mid or lower level however like the the top level goals or like the the vision that you have for your life like you shouldn't be changing that on a regular basis you should kind of have that fixed and have that sense of direction to go and um and also like listen to the voices that you take into consideration because is there are there certain people that you value their input or are there people that are telling you things that either a they don't have the credentials to tell you that or B they're, they're like unhelpful. They're not like a healthy, you know, you, you kind of have to determine like, are these people qualified to tell me that either a, like I'm doing poorly or B like need to improve, or this is a great thing. That's like really working out for me. You really need to determine um, like if these people should be the ones giving you uh, the feedback, you know? So uh, I highly recommend evaluating, like whenever you get feedback that doesn't necessarily resonate with you, um, maybe consider like one, is it something that I need to work on? Because of course there's a good chance it is. Um, But then second of all, like maybe it actually is the person that's giving it. Maybe they're, I, I would get this. I would get this a lot. At, in church music, everyone has an opinion of what should be done. And I kind of like see it, I mean, two, two things. Like, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinions and, you know, some of it, it can be a little bit subjective, yes. However, if you think about it, there are, you know, woodworkers. And I'm sure there's people that, crit- you know, might consider criticizing a woodworker. Um, but for the most part, people wouldn't because, you know, they should know their craft. They should know. Um, so like, but there, there are certain areas that people just love giving their opinion. It doesn't matter, you know, if they're qualified or not, they will give it. Um, but like, you know, there's other areas that they, they don't even think twice of giving an opinion because they don't know a difference of, um, so think about whether they're qualified or not, because oftentimes when I got complaints, I I got complaints on like either side of the the field. So like, I've kind of felt like that was a good sign that you're like kind of going the middle road. You're not like either extreme. Um, But yeah, I I usually took any like uh, criticism, creative, not creative, um, 
constructive. That's the word I'm looking for. Constructive criticism. I'm always a big fan. of. If someone's going to give criticism and they can give it constructively, like I'm totally, you know, 100% on board of like trying to apply that. And in fact, if you have any cr- uh, creative constructive criticism of this podcast i would love to hear it you know shoot me a message like i'm i'm open like if you have a like a a thing that you recommend improving on always always uh looking for ways to improve um because like as you go along you're going to see um you know ways that you can make those small changes which like that's how you make big leaps it's not like all of a sudden tomorrow, like you're, you're great at something. And that's where this grit comes in. It's like, you can't just play the small game. Like, yes, like you can maybe sprint really fast one time. Uh, but like, if you do not work up the stamina to do it, you know, multiple times, like you're going to be done, you know, for the long haul. So like, yes, sprints can be important, but like, look at your life as a marathon, like see what it would take for you to really, you know, take life by the reins, but yeah. And just like figure out what it is your passion is. Uh, again, it's not like a fleeting passion. Uh, they had this conversation, uh, the Angela Duckworth, the author, like had this conversation with the entrepreneur and he was saying like how he's like super passionate about the businesses that he does. And she was like, are you going to be doing the same thing like a year from now? It's like, well, me, like, you know, he like, he wasn't a hundred percent sure perhaps. And so she was like, if you are still at it, you know, a year, two years, four years down the road and you're doing that same thing and you're doing it well, then, you know, because like entrepreneurs in particular, they just have like this shiny object syndrome where all of a sudden, you know, they're working on one thing and then it's like, oh, this is another interesting idea, like completely different. And maybe that's their uh, grit. It's just like they're the initiator. Maybe that that's it. Like they, they've got this passion around like starting things like that. That's their big thing. Um, so I'm sure there's different ways to live out grittiness. Um, but yeah, think, think about your life. Uh, maybe like take a day that you can just like step aside from life and just like see um, where you are, take an inventory, maybe consider habits that you want to start. Um, again, highly recommend the book Atomic Habits has a great, great, great book um, about like you can habit stack where like you already have habits in your life and maybe you stack them on them. Um, but like fundamentally, like day in and day out, like if you work on something, you should be able to like see results even if you don't become like a professional or um you know like the top person in that field like you you can still make leaps and bounds because like you can compound your efforts over time like if you stick with something for a long period of time um and you're doing um and this this is important it's like deliberate practice so like instead of um you know just mindlessly like for example with swimming or with music and maybe even in like other fields like deliberate practice is so important because basically that's the sense of like you're putting your best foot forward you're looking at um ways that you can improve not just like going through the motions, like doing another rep, another rep without thinking like, what can I do to improve this? Uh, Or focus on like one element of a movement uh, and just saying like, hey, I'm just going to work on this element and uh, work work on that. And man, and (laughs) it's funny, I'm going full circle to when we started this podcast episode and uh, talk about sleep. Sleep is so important. I can't tell you how important it is. And I feel like I've, I've gotten off my uh, regular schedule. So hoping to get back onto that, but uh, consistency, I think in, in the why we sleep book, like the consistent time, if, if you take one thing away from this episode, the consistent bedtime and wake up time is like one of the most important things. And it is so hard. 
But I encourage you, if you're looking for one way to discipline your life and one thing to be a little gritty about, maybe not your top level gritty, but like a little lower level gritty, uh, maybe consider making your bedtime consistent. Uh, and yeah, see, see what happens. Uh, I love this thing that um, Jordan Peterson says. It's like, just do what you say and like see where your life takes you because like you know a lot of people talk about things and they don't actually do it but like imagine in your life if you actually did the things that you talked about for me like with this podcast it took me forever to actually start it because um i wasn't able to start it i i probably should have pushed it a little bit and uh, gotten it started when i was when i was uh, younger but like it was like a passion of mine like i always wanted to start a podcast like i, I was just like i should start a podcast and um Many years later, like it was just like this moment, this eureka moment where uh, Spencer, the person that started this podcast with me, the beautiful mess, Spencer Pugh, like he was just like, hey, we're having this conversation. And he's like, hey, we should document this. Like, you know, people can benefit from it. So I was like, yes, yes, let's do it. And uh, here we are, episode 29. And uh, hopefully many more to come. We'll see. We'll see how things go. If this is part of my top level uh, grittiness or if it's one of those medium or lower levels and I'll have to adapt. But, you know, take, take an inventory of your life. See where things are and get gritty, my friends. Well, friends, it's been a joy and a pleasure as always. If you want to join the Messy Fam, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow all that good stuff uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. Or if you want to watch the podcast, we're on YouTube and uh, would love to you know, talk to you. So shoot me a DM. I'm on most of the social platforms. So be sure to find me there at Paul Dittis um, and look forward to chatting with you soon. Until next time, my friends, stay messy.